So Liverpool completed the signing of Luis Diaz in the January transfer window, but in late deadline day drama, a deal for Fulham's Fabio Carvalho fell through. What actually happened? What were the ins and outs? What was the timeline on it? What is the truth behind the whole Fabio Carvalho deal? And are Liverpool still in for the young Fulham forwards? I spoke to goals Neil Jones on this week's journey. No inside show, and this is what he had to say. We're going to talk Fabio Carvalho. We had a question, and I, and I think there's a. It's good for us to kind of let have a, a broad chat around the timeline of this Carvalho stuff and some of the motivations and reasons and what actually almost happened on mm. deadline day. Um, but Hakuna Matt Atta in our club legend Discord chat, well, in, uh, said, the king, yeah, absolutely. So, there, uh, why did Liverpool leave it so late yeah. in the window trying to sign Carvalho, and what are the implications of signing him in the summer? Um, that's the thing that I can't square off here is for a deal that wasn't even going to see a player brought actively brought into the football yeah, club yeah. until the summer. What was the point yeah. of trying to get this done before deadline day? Well, there was a reason to get it done before deadline day. That's a separate point. But the, the first question is why? Why do you? And I, I ask it every every year with when you see you know nine o'clock on deadline day and you say someone's rung up about Jesse Lingard. You're like, what? Where have you been? Like, you know, like, where have you been? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, Liverpool, I've done that on deadline day. I wouldn't say quite as, you know, simplistically as that. But you're right. Like, why Why would you, why would you not have that pipelined, you know, before then? And the reason would be, the obvious reason would be that Fulham just weren't willing to entertain the idea until late in the window and they've realised, you know what, we could get, Eight million pound for someone who's probably going to leave for three hundred thousand in the summer, and we're already pretty much going up, regardless. Yeah. No, I mean, full full of guaranteed score. I think unless something crazy happens there, unless Nico Williams goes in with you know flamethrower and absolutely <laughs> destroys <laughs> yeah. destroys things, which I'm, I'm pretty sure he won't. But so that 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 opportunity comes up, the implications of Liverpool. Why would they want to sign him before the deadline? It's because it, it avoids just that months of the risk of the phone ringing and, and someone saying, Do you know what Leipzig have said? We're giving the number 10 shit and he's going to start every game and, you know, he's this and that and we, they've offered the pathway and we're going to, we're going to go Leipzig. You know, that kind of, that kind of risk that Liverpool are taking bodes well that he was obviously going to join Liverpool. He was, he was prepared to join. So he, he was ready to, because he could easily have said, no, I'm alright. Thanks. I'll, I'll. I'm not. If I'm going to stay here anyway till the end of the season, I'll stay here and I'll. I'll. I'll keep my options open. Yeah. You know, he didn't. He, he was willing to come to Liverpool. So hopefully that bodes well for whatever happens now. And I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm sure, but I'm sure there will be heavy negotiations at Liverpool are saying, look, can we can we come to some sort of arrangement where rather than you going to, through this tribunal process, which with Harvey Elliott, I think it took about eighteen months. To, to decide, and to be fair, Fulham got shafted yeah. in, in that regard. What was it, 1.7 rising to 4.3? I think in a few years' time, we'll be talking about the bargain of the century with, with Harvey Elliott. Yeah. Um, so F Fulham don't really want that situation because they might not trust the tribunal process. Liverpool don't want it because it's a long, drawn-out saga, which involves a bit of work. Mm -hmm. um, so if, the, we, if they can agree something where... Fulham are guaranteed this with this whatever structure. The player's happy to come. Hopefully, Liverpool will get it done. But the reason they wanted it done there and then is so they can put their feet up for the next four months without worrying about who's pitching his parents and yeah. the player and who's trying to turn his head and who's suddenly, you know, entered the race. And there's a lot of clubs. I mean, I spoke to our Chelsea correspondent today and I think Chelsea are one of the clubs who would absolutely take... Fabio Cavallo and probably park him somewhere for a couple of seasons <laughs> happily. Yeah. Um, so that was why Liverpool wanted to get the deal done. I suppose there's also that thing of now, and this is maybe the and one of the potential negative knock-ons if they don't get something boxed, is that Liverpool have now done the due diligence on a player for mm. every football club on the yeah, planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right. And that's that's a gold standard, isn't it? It used to be Arsene Wenger. So if Arsene Wenger was trying to sign a player from the French league or a young, you know, a young French-speaking player, the world went well. And that's what that was Arsenal's downfall in the end, really, yeah. recruitment-wise. That other clubs started recruiting the Nicholas and Elkers and the Petits and whoever else, and Arsenal lost that competitive advantage. Liverpool have got 
you know, a very, very good reputation in, in world football for the, the quality of their scout and the the data that they use, the, the modeling that they use to, to to decide where the player's potential is gonna take him. And obviously then on top of that they have the environment when you get to the club that you can you can add that X percent on through training and um atmosphere around the club and, you know, harnessing the fans and whatever else. So you're right. If there was a club that was thinking, you like him, but what do you think? And then you say, well, Liverpool like him. You, it, it, it is a tick in the box, I think, for, for, for anyone who's scouting a player. If you say, well, Liverpool are going to pay £8 million for him, you know, we will. Just to your understanding then, because obviously Ted Day was a, was a wild one, uh, typically, in, in, in typical fashion, I, I was doing a live, I, I uh, po- as the window closed... Uh, got to nine minutes past eleven, and I, you tweeted the picture of the Premier League uh, deal sheet uh, yeah. thing as well. I was like, okay, well that all makes sense, and that you know yeah, we, we, yeah. it's been talked about a lot. And I literally pressed stop, and ten seconds later, I think it was um, Lynch's tweet come through, and it, yeah. it started to filter out this whole the deal has collapsed, yeah, etc. Yeah. Just from to your understanding, just from a mechanical process. What what was it ultimately that scuppered the? Well, f- from what what I'm told is it's too, it was the fact that it was two deals that were having to go through simultaneously, simultaneously, three really if you count Nico Williams into the mix, which I know a lot of people were quite skeptical. Oh, that one went through, did it? But Liverpool were having to negotiate and and fill a paperwork out for a, a transfer, i.e. Fabio Carvalho is becoming a Liverpool player, and a loan i.e. Liverpool are now loaning Fabio Carvalho to Fulham. So it's two deals going through. Unfortunately, the deal sheet, the pre- I, I, I wasn't aware of that at the time and I, I didn't know because I thought, I didn't know it was only between Premier League clubs. I thought if a Premier League club was involved then you mm-hmm. can obviously do that, but it's only between Premier League clubs you can do the deal sheet thing um, as Everton did with uh, Dele Alli. I think there was others as well. I think there was a few others that were confirmed after the window had shut. Um you can't do it with an EFL club. You don't get that extra two hours. And I th- I'd, I'm told if they did get the two extra two hours, it would have got done. Um, it always feels a little bit silly, to be honest. It, it always yeah. feels just a little bit like, come on, like, you know. I, I, my thing in this is always this, because it's it, and it, it comes with, of course, when you set a, an arbitrary time limit on something or anything, like a, a limit in any way, shape or yeah. form. And it's like um, McDonald's stop, stop serving breakfast at half 10. <laughs> and if you get there at 31 minutes past and they go, come on, it's one minute. Well, what point is it? Yeah. Not that long. Because it's all in the phrase. And then, oh, come on, it's, yeah. only, fi- it's only five. It's only half an the, hour. When you can see the McMuffin there, don't you think, well, just give us that one. You know, I'll, I'll have that <laughs> yeah. one. And, and when you start to open up this door to... Yeah, you're right. Right. It's like offside, isn't it? It's like when people say, oh, come on, he's, he's an inch offside. So, well, no. And people say, well, you know, you need to have the, the margin of error. So, well, at some point, there'll be an inch in the margin of error, whether, it, you know, yes. whatever you... So, I, I, I get it, I get it. But it, it's it's one of them that just... It just annoys people. And I can see exactly why it annoys Liverpool fans in this instance, because it's a very good player that they're still not sure of signing. But also, it is a little bit like, well, what were you... You know, come on, it was the 31st of January, you know... <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't a case either like Luis Diaz where Fabio Cavallo was on his way to Bayern Munich and Liverpool have suddenly come in quite late and, and tried to gazump great word for, for the depth, for the window. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I still think there's a degree of confidence that he ends up at Liverpool. I hope he does because as like you said we talk about due diligence, I think I think all of us as pundits, media, fans just general observers. We've all done our due diligence on yes. Luis Diaz and Fabio Carvalho in the last few days. Yeah, 100%. Uh, just to follow, because I think you've answered the question almost twice now, but Josh was saying that, is there likely to be a pre-contract agreement for the summer? If, if there was ever likely to be one with yeah. a player, it's likely to be. Yeah, and I, I think Nico, I go back to Nico really, but I think that does, it does bode well. I feel like, I feel like that would be, a gesture of good faith. Yeah, and I think it would, it would be held against Liverpool quite strongly if, if Fabio Carvalho ends up with a Manchester City shirt and you're saying, we'll just give them our, our second choice right back to, to, to help them get promoted. But no loan fee involved with Nico as well, unlike Nat. No promotion. I, I think actually there might be a promotion bonus. But there's no loan fee involved. So does that tell you a little bit as well that Liverpool are saying, well, come on, there's our, there's our sort of, you know, our show of faith, our, our show of goodwill. Now your turn. 
Thank you so much for checking out that. That was just a small segment from this week's hour-long Jano Insight Show, wrapping up the entire transfer window. We even talked about Bakayo Saka, strong links with Liverpool. Do they like the Arsenal forward? Are they going to look to capitalise on his contract situation in the next 18 months? We talked Nat Phillips, we talked Nico Williams, but more on the Luis Diaz deal and loads more in between as well. That show is streaming right now on Red Men Plus. Head over there, join up, watch it or listen to it in podcast form and we hope to see you over there. Hey, if you want to get your name here and be a club legend like so many have so far, join up to Red Men Plus. You get an incredible range of Liverpool content. Our Netflix for Liverpool fan style service is there for you. Documentaries, features and interviews. And yes, we also have the club legends here. So if you want to go a bit deeper, get a deeper connection with us and with Liverpool Football Club as well, then sign up to theredmentv.com. Red Men Plus are a club legend here and there's loads of extra bonus perks for you as well. Check it out.